This is Eric, the Cocos Evangelist. Today, I'm going to use the case of ship running to introduce you to the animation system. Ship running looks like a side scrolling video game, but everything, including the character control or the enemy movement, is achieved through the animation system. Next, let's see how it is created. First, let's take a look at our assets. Here is the background. I'm going to use this eerie background to create an eerie atmosphere. And this is the ground. And these are the images of each frame when the shape jumps. And these are the images of running. I'll put these images together to create the running animation and jumping animation. Next, I'll use the current assets to build the scene. Since these are all image assets, here we select Create UI Component Canvas. Drag the background image to it. Then you'll find it cannot be dragged here because the default image type is texture, which is not for the UI. If you want to use it for the UI, you should choose Sprite Frame Type. Then drag it again. OK. Let me switch the perspective. Now the background is already in the scene. Let me adjust its size, because the canvas is much bigger than the background. The background is just too small, so let me scale it, double its size. OK, this looks much better now. Next, let me lay the ground. Use Shift to select all images and choose Sprite Frame. Drag the ground image here. To resize it, press T on your keyboard and the wrecked gizmo will appear. Drag its right border. You'll find that when dragging, the ground image will be stretched, which is a bit ugly. So how to solve the stretching effect? First, restore it to the default size. Then find type of the sprite component in the inspector panel. Choose tiled which is like laying tiles. OK, let's take a look. See? This way, the ground image won't be stretched, which looks much better than before. Then adjust its width to the same size as the background. Then adjust the offset in the x-axis direction. OK. Press W to go back to the Move Gizmo. Now, we have the background and the ground. The ground looks a bit high. Move it down a little. This position will do. Now it's time to put our shape on the ground. For example, I choose the running state. Well, this is not good enough. Or choose this one. This one looks like the standing state. Drag it over here. Adjust his position. Looks like he's ready to run. Next, let me edit his running animation so that the ship will have a running motion instead of panning over on the ground. OK, select the ship node. Click Add Animation Component to create an animation clip. Name it Run. Then it's ready for editing. This is the animation panel. Let's take a look at the structure of it. This part is the menu bar. The buttons in the menu bar allow you to perform some general operations on the animation. And this is the search box, which allows to perform some quick searches on the nodes and other functionalities. To the right is the timeline which allows to easily view the point in time where each keyframe of the animation is located and where to dispatch events, etc. This is the node list. 
is a list of the nodes you currently want to animate, and the node tree constructed from it and all its children is presented here. And this part is the keyframe preview of the node. We can see all the keyframes created here. This is the property list, which lists all the components on the current node and all their properties, and you can manipulate the specific properties to animate the node. To the right is the property keyframe editor, which is used to edit keyframes. It allows the animation to have corresponding changes according to the data you edit. At the bottom is the editing area for the properties related to the current animation clip, like how the animation plays, whether it plays once or in a loop, and the way it is sampled. This is all about the animation panel. Next, let's animate the sheep. To animate the sheep, let's take a look at the sprite component on him. He has a sprite property, which points to his image. So what we did in the property list of the animation panel is the sprite frame in the sprite component. When the sheep is running, its action is composed of four images. That is the frame animation. So just select all four running images of the sheep and drag them into the keyframe editor. The keyframes will be automatically generated. See? All the keyframes are listed here, and all images are showed here. When I move the cursor here, it shows Ship Run 2, then Ship Run 3, right? Okay, you can see that when I'm moving the cursor, the ship starts to run. Let me reset its position, then replay. He will make a very fast running action, and then suddenly stop. But running is certainly not just running a little and then stop. It's a looped process. Let me reset its position and try again. Okay, this is the action of the ship running. We got the ship running with four images. But have you noticed that the ship is running too fast, just like someone is chasing after it? This is actually okay if we create a scene where the ship is being chased by wolves or other enemies. Then the ship runs fast for a reason. To make the ship run leisurely, you can select all the keyframes and adjust the time interval between each keyframe from 5 to 10. Then click play. Now the ship runs slower. It's not in a hurry anymore. But it looks a little slow now. Mm, let me adjust the spacing to about 8. Good. Looks normal now. This is the animation of the ship running. Now the running animation is done. Let's create another one. Save it. Exit. It's time for the jumping animation. If you still have this node selected, since the animation on the ship node is still the running animation, you will find that you can't edit the new animation. So we need to exit first. Create a jump animation in the assets panel. And drag it to the animation list of the ship in the inspector panel. Now go back to the animation panel. It's still the running animation. Notice that here is a clip list. You can switch here. Now you can edit the jumping animation. Similarly, you should edit the sprite frame property of sprite. Select all the jumping images. OK, drag them in. Let's take a look. Because the spacing is a bit too long, the jump looks raw. We need to adjust it again. Still too slow. Maybe 4. 
Let me use the loop mode. This speed looks okay. Good. Save and exit. Now the running and jumping animations of the shape is complete. Next, it's time to start creating the atmosphere we want for the game. First, add some platforms to the scene. Drag the shape to the right, letting running slowly from the right. Then create platforms. Resize it. Reduce it to half times the original size. Scale it a little more. Still looks a bit large. Maybe 0.3. Much better. Place it here. Okay, create another. Place it a bit higher. Create another one. This way the ship can jump down. Okay, these are the platforms for the ship to jump on. But why does he want to jump? There must be something dangerous on the ground which forces him to jump. Here we select all the monsters, change their type, choose one of them and place it on the ground. You can move horizontally on the ground and attack the sheep. As the sheep jumps up, we should animate the monster as well. First move it here. When it moves to this position, the sheep will be ready to jump up. Okay, let me create an animation for it. Just name it Move. This animation is simple. Just change its position property. Keyframe it at the current uh, zero, 00 point. Next, move it to this position. Release the mouse and the second keyframe will be automatically added. It's more convenient since you had to keyframe by yourself before. Let's take a look. Well, it moves too fast. Let me pull the keyframe further to about frame 20, frame 22. It's still a bit fast. Just keep pulling it further to about frame 50. I think this speed is okay. It should move from left to right, then from right to left. So just create another keyframe. At about this point. And move the monster back. Okay, let's take a look at the whole process. Well, the way back becomes twice as long. But we only give it 50 frames to move. So it's still too fast. Let me adjust again. Pull it even further. This position will do. Take a look. See? It looks normal now. OK, save and exit. Next, let's design the ship's escape route. Lower these platforms a bit. Because the vertical spacing between the platforms and the monsters shouldn't be that large. The scenario I want to design is that when he jumps on the first platform, there will be an arrow shot from behind. So I left some space for the arrow. Click camera. You'll find that there is no content in the camera view. That's because there is a visibility property in the camera component which supports UI 3D and UI 2D layer. But the layer of all UI nodes here is default, which can't be linked to the UI camera. That's why the camera view is empty. We need to select all nodes and change their layer to UI 2D. OK, click camera again. The scene now can be seen from the camera view.
Let me add another background to the lab of a scene. Set the position on the x axis to minus ten twenty four. Add another section of ground as long as the previous one. Hold down Command and D to quickly duplicate nodes. Of course, you can choose different approach, like the tiled mode we used before, and then extend the ground to the left. Okay, now the sheep comes from the right. He jumps between platforms. Then he jumps down. Maybe here comes another monster, or maybe not. We can shoot an arrow from the left when he jumps down in here. We don't shoot the arrow from the right anymore. Okay, put the arrow on the scene. It's also of sprite frame type. Put it here. It's invisible at first. About this position, when the ship touches the ground, the arrow suddenly comes out. Okay. Next, we can start directing the scene. Let him run to the first destination. But there are already animations on the ship node. There is no way to play multiple animations at the same time. What should we do? Let me create an empty node. Name it Hero. Move it to the same position as the ship node. Then put the ship node under the hero node. The animations on the ship node are only running and jumping, and his movement is taken care of by the hero node. Let me add an animation clip on the hero node. Name it ship move. Next, edit the animation. When editing the animation, let the sheep move to this place. Then he can start to jump. Put a keyframe here. Then move the cursor to about okay to frame fifty. Then move the sheep to this position. Let's see the speed. This speed is just right. Not too fast, and not too slow. Then it's time to switch the animation. Because he was running, then he should jump up. But you can't switch the animation in this panel. You need to use code to implement it. The best way is to write the process of switching the animation in code. The key is to let the code know when to switch the animation. But how should we do? Here, I create an animation event. We use an event to tell the code that we want to switch the animation at this point. Okay, name it jump. Save. When the animation plays to this point, it will send a jump event. Once the event is received, the animation can be switched. Now that the animation is switched, the sheep still need to move forward. Let me see. Move the cursor to this point, then move him to the first platform. His jump trajectory should be a parabola, not a straight line. A straight line is too stiff, like this. We hope the jump looks natural. We can adjust his motion curve. The first period of his movement is straight. The moment he jumps should be fast. Adjust its component in x and y directions separately. The motion in the x direction is linear, but in the y direction we need to adjust it a bit. We want it to jump up fast, then fall on the platform. We use ease out. Here, choose this curve. Adjust it a bit. Okay, let's see the actual effect. 
Jump. Four. Place the animation. Jump. Four. Looks okay. When he jumps on the platform, since the spacing between platforms is not large, we can move him a little forward. Edit the running animation. Move him a little forward. Okay. Switch to the running animation when he falls on the platform. So we need to create an animation event here. Name it run. When he reaches this position, he's gonna jump again. So we create another animation event. Name it jump. Then switch between two animations. And he will jump again, which costs about 30 frames to about this point. Again, he jumps from one platform to another. Right? Similarly, change its Y component. Use ease out as well. Adjust the curve. Let's see the effect. Start from here. Fall, run, jump again. Looks good. After jumping up, it's time to jump down. Let's just ignore its movement on the platform this time. Move the cursor to this point. Then the sheep reaches the next platform. OK. The fall curve is definitely different from the jump curve. Let me adjust the fall curve. We want its trajectory to look like a parabola. Let the X curve remain unchanged and adjust the Y curve. We use ease in here and choose this curve. Adjust it. Jump up a little and drop down quickly. Just leave the X curve unchanged. Play the animation. Looks good. OK. Next, move the cursor to this position. Then the shape should reach the ground here. Adjust its curve as well. Similarly, use ease in and select this curve. Adjust it as what we did before. OK. X curve remains unchanged. Let's see the effect. OK, now he reached the ground. He can start to run again. Let's see, it's uh, at 2 seconds and 50 frames. Almost 3 seconds. Let's assume it's 3 seconds. At this point, the arrow will shoot out. That means the animation of the arrow should delay for 3 seconds. We still need to evaluate the exact position it should reach. When the arrow is shot out, when the arrow is on this way, the sheep must jump up in advance. He should jump over the arrow. A big jump. Save first. Let's find out where the arrow should be. Exit. Add an animation clip on the arrow as well. Name it Jian Move. Similarly, choose Position. After 3 seconds, add a keyframe here. After the arrow passes the shape, it doesn't matter where it finally reaches. That's because when the arrow reaches here, it's already beyond the screen. The camera will slowly move to the left. After the camera stops, we can no longer see the arrow. It makes no difference to us whether it gets here or there. Let me give it three more seconds. 
to the fifth second is okay, I think. Move the arrow to this position. Okay. Take a look. Looks okay. Next, we need to decide when to let the sheep jump. Let's see. When the arrow reaches here, about frame 40, then the sheep can start jumping. Shorten it a bit. Frame 30, the sheep moves forward to this position. Then he should jump immediately and reach here. The speed of the arrow is okay. Very steady. Save and exit. Let's continue to adjust the animation of the sheep. After about 3 seconds, move the sheep to about this position. Here. Give him about 20 frames to move. When he reaches here, it's about time to jump. That's too fast. Let's give him 10 more frames. Take a look. Looks good. But there is no way to play the jump animation twice. Let me think if there is a better way. Let me add a platform here. Duplicate this platform. And move it here. Once the ship makes it here, it's a victory. Since you are the director, you can do whatever you want with the scene, right? Okay. Time to jump. Jump to about frame 50. Move it to the platform. Now he's actually out of the danger zone. Okay. Adjust the curve as before. Adjust it a bit, like this. Let me play the animation. See? Then he should jump down from the platform. Again, add another keyframe here. Jump down. Adjust the Y curve. Okay. Let's take a look at the whole process. That's almost the end of the whole show, because he's finally safe and sound. Okay, save it. The whole scene is almost complete, but there is still one thing needs to be done. The camera should start to move when the ship jumps on the first platform. Take a look. The camera is at this area at first. Then it will slowly move to the left. Let me reset its position. OK. Let's add an animation clip on the camera node as well. Name it Camera Move. Then edit the animation. I'm sure you guys are already familiar with the animation editing, right? Add a keyframe here. Oh, wrong timing. The camera shouldn't move until the ship reaches the first platform. Maybe we can set a delay of 20 frames for it. Add the first keyframe. Then the camera starts to move to the left for 3 seconds. Add another keyframe here. Move it to about this position. Let's see the entire movement. Slowly moving to the left. OK. Save. After saving, let's run it and see the effect. The script for switching the animation is not done yet. Oh, there's something I forgot to do. I forgot to change the layer of the letter added nodes. Change their layer to UI2D. Otherwise, they won't appear in the camera view. 
Also, if we want the animation to play automatically, we should check play on load. Here. An arrow. Okay, save the scene. Run it. Perfect. Right? Everything looks fine. Let's replay it. The camera moves a bit too fast. We can slow it a bit. He managed to get through all the crises. Let's make some more adjustments. To make the whole show look better, we can delay the camera by 10 frames. To frame 30, save and exit. Next, time to write the script. The script should be attached on the ship node. No, it should be attached on the hero node. Because the animation events are dispatched by the moving animation, and the passing of events is recursive upwards. See? The first animation event is here. Let's recreate a script here. Name it Animation State Changed. Now let me write the script. We defined two animations before, one named Jump, another named Run. Accordingly, we define two functions named jump and run. Meanwhile, we need to define an animation to obtain the animation component on the ship. Okay. Now we can switch between different states. Let it play the jump animation. Notice that there is an error, because the animation here is of node type, not of CC animation type. OK, now it will do. Next, add the script on the hero node. Save it and see the result. The pace looks good. Since I haven't added frame events since then, except for the two at the beginning, the animation won't switch after that. It's okay. We can fix that later. Today's content focuses on how to create simple scenes like ship running through the animation system. That's all for today. See you in the next video.